Let's go do some of the white stuff. That's it. There. Oh yeah, let's get it in the wash. Probably, yeah. Uh, did I put a monster in the fridge before? Oh, there he is. Yeah. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. So, in today's video, we... title we both have got COVID so I thought we'd put this video together I had a lot of questions on Instagram and by a lot of questions I mean my mum's messaged me on WhatsApp saying I'm okay but um, we both got the results back yesterday well we went for a test yesterday that we had COVID it's funny actually because we both went for a different type of test didn't we? It was it was a, a lateral flow test. Lateral flow test I think. Have you saw your results for that one? Yeah and it says negative. Can you show? Uh, Sunday that was mine your coronavirus lateral flow test result is negative. I don't know if you can see that. If you can't, I'll pop it on the screen. Okay. Um, yes. And then... Negative. And then yesterday. Positive. Which is weird. I think I've heard some people say that these lateral flow tests aren't that um, valid. valid. It was the one called the swab test or a, a lamp test, I think the one's called. Yeah. Uh, which is more reliable, they take 48 why hours to get bad. back. Like, why, why, why would it, why, why would they have to if they're not valid? Because <laughs> we were just like, yeah, we're negative. But quite clearly, we probably weren't. Um, it's a bit of a scam, isn't it? I have no idea. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a pharmacologist, I don't work in a lab, I have no idea. I just lift weights and no, know that I have COVID. Either. Well, I actually don't even lift weights at the moment, so <laughs> basically, I have no life. So, um, we actually went for the test yesterday. So on that note, here's the test. So we just pulled up at the COVID test and say, center station. How are you feeling? I actually feel like shit. Yeah, so <coughs> we're now doing our second test. This is the swab test. I don't know what the first one's called, I'll find out. Um, but this one's the one that takes like 24 to 40 hours to get back. So just in the queue for it now. It's actually not that busy. Some of the testing stations looks fairly straightforward, well organized. Um, just waiting to get our packs. So we just got our tests. Lucy's already mucked it off because uh, she tried to do my test, which says driver. So we've got the packs and we've got swab. Um, we didn't get really that much indication of what to do. I don't think, do you? We don't have a pen. I don't think we fill that in. They must fill that. I think they're supposed to fill it in. Um, then we've got the pack, which has got like swabbing, some more bits in the test. We've just got to basically launch it up the nostril, launch it up the back of the throat. Does it have instructions? How do we know what to do with that liquid? What liquid? It does, if you read the pack, it does explain things on this bit here. Yeah? This is what I went for the one at Man City's ground last time. They basically just said, read through this, and then you go put some hand gel on. I think you dab the thing in before or after you put it back in the the holder. Basically just tickle your tonsils a bit, play it off your nose for a little bit, and bang understand. it in. It is quite complicated. You do get like a little checklist thing with it as well. But Take the swab. Are they just giving you bad tissues? Do you want me to facilitate you doing yours first? So take the swab, take the swab, put the swab sample into the plastic tube. You put it in the liquid. Yeah. Why? Did oh. you do that last time? Yeah, I'll help you do yours first. You didn't do that last time. I'll get the bullet in anything. I mean, they're not very good instructions, to be honest. Take the swab. Can you just make sure you look at that as well, baby, when you're there? Well, no, I'm looking at that. Okay. I just roll it round. I 
I think if you tickle your tonsils, not deep throat it, by the way. If you need on your tonsils now, you've battered them. And it says blow into the tissue. Get rid of any excess mucus. I didn't do that bit. That's, after, that's the step two. You've done step one. Step two is that. Yeah, I'm telling you now. Yeah, I've just blown my nose. Is that a tissue? Can tissue, tissue, innit? <laughs> Nose. Did you put the liquid in the thing first? Hmm? Put liquid on the end first. No. Yeah. You're supposed to. No. But are you putting the, the same end up your nose? Obviously. Yeah. Soon the end, it's got fucking sun. That's very nice to know. Rotate the swab for 10 to 15 seconds. Feel a slight resistance, push it off. It hurts. Sample one nostril. I did two. Well, this is a shit astrophe, isn't it? It says you only second. need to. Yeah. Right, package your test kit. Make okay. sure that the fabric tip is facing down as you place it into the tube. Snap off the other end of the swab so that it fits inside the tube without bending. I put I put that in liquid. Yeah. you got to snap, put it in snap the end off. And when does it snap? They will snap. Oh, did it? Then what do I do? First, then you put in, put it in. Could you purely in screw the lid that no liquid can leak out. First, place the absorbent pad into the Ziploc bag down there. Yeah. The absorbent pad. Is that what you usually use? Yeah, I blew my nose on that. Wow. <sighs> That's the absorbent pad. Put your tampon in there with the tube. Why? Because it, it helps get any rid of any liquids. I just fucking blew my nose on that. Just put that in there. <laughs> place the tube next to the absorbent pad in the same bag. Place the Ziploc pad into the biohazard bag. This is supposed to go in a ziplock bag. Oh my god. Welcome to uh, COVID tests with the fucking idiots. But to be fair, the instructions aren't that clear. Well, I'm, I'm talking you through them. Yeah. If you listen to the instructions I was giving you, it doesn't say zip it, by the way. It just says place into it. Do not seal the biohazard bag. Yeah, this isn't the biohazard. Done. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Bloody You'll have to fill something out there. I don't know why they haven't given us a pen. Do you want to talk me through mine now? Yourself, it's fine. Should you just talk me through mine? Yeah, but I don't remember it all. Talk me through it. Blow your nose. With first. Start with your tampon. <coughs> I haven't got any excess music you can suck me now, today. I? Apologise, it's not the most uh, pleasant video to watch. So take the thing out, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's for afterwards, isn't it? So it's a little tube for afterwards. If you take this out, feel here. That little girl's trying to do it, that's horrible for a little girl. Fuck. If you didn't know what was going on, you'd think it was child abuse, wouldn't you? That is horrible, that's trying to do it to a kid. So I've got this out, what am I doing now? Shove it up your... I think it's tonsils first. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, fucking hell. How long for? About 10 seconds. Right, and then nose. It's not disgusting, by the way, you've got to put it in your mouth and not your nose. Mm. Right, there we go. Turn it on or This is 10 to 15 seconds. Makes my eyes water. Yeah, it's not eyes. Oh, fucking can't do any longer than that. Oh, then what? Tube it. Have you got a tube? Okay, and he goes. Snap them off. Grow them on. Uh, so I did have the pad in. You want to tuck it all out, wasn't you? You don't listen. That goes in there. Like that. There's my bag. Test done. That, is that it? You've got yeah. sanitizer size your hands. That's a test. I think we've just got to pass it on to someone now. So our guide's been over. We've got to push all the air out. Put a silver bit on. Have you done yours? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, mate. Thank you. Right, so we are now just about 40 to. Hours. He says it's usually taking a day at the moment, but he said it can take 40 hours. We're now just about to drive over to the little place where we hand them in, get them over to the deck, and then I think we just got to wait for our test results then, and that's, that's it, isn't that's it? it. Job done. Right, so we're now just about to drive 
So, we're on day two. Well, day two since we have had the test back anyway. So, I think, look at now what we're on Saturday. It is six days since I had first symptoms, two days since having a test. One of the big things that stands out is how tired I am getting up and down the stairs, like feeling fatigued. And I'm quite fit and healthy. So, for someone who has underlying health conditions, Someone who is obese, someone who isn't as fit as healthy as me, I can only imagine how hard it must be to difficult, how difficult it must be to do everyday tasks. To answer, it just feels like flu in regards to symptoms. Taste still isn't back yet. I even had at first like a metallic taste, so everything just tasted like it had been still one time, a tin can for like a week. Left on the side of the sofa and then I'd eaten it. So obviously it doesn't change too much for us because we're in the middle of another lockdown anyway. You must stay at home. Do not go out. You know the score. So, not being able to do anything anyway doesn't really change anything. However, the thing that is shit is pretty much my life is picking up heavy shit and back down again. Then one more rep and get a fat bicep pump. But at the moment, I can't even do that. We've also, obviously in the last lockdown, if anyone watched my videos, I only had like a kettlebell and a dumbbell. Which means I could dumbbell curl and kettlebell clean and press and that was about it. So I had one massive bicep and a decent shoulder and then pair of legs which are non-existent. We've now just decked up the whole gym, which is great, but I can't use it. So Lucy and their sister are currently just using it. Let's swing this round. So this is the current home gym situation that we have going on. These two are outside at the moment training, getting mazzy bro. So that is the rack. We've got a landmine, we've got some plates, kettlebells. Isn't at the moment it's like two degrees, so it's freezing, so you have to try and stay warm. Hoping by like maybe Monday or Tuesday I'd be able to get back out there and do something which is like 50% of the load that I'd usually do. Who knows, we've got to play it by ear, so I feel. We're now on Saturday afternoon, so at the moment struggling to get up the stairs. I don't think I'll be able to do much. If I do anything, I'm probably gonna go back to doing isolation bro stuff. You know, just like bicep curl and then car phrases and all the good shit really. But we'll just have to wait and see. Surely you can ask for it with tofu. What is it? Oh, I've got Megan Davis one as well. What? Your name's come through to my text. Saying what? Just what your isolation period. Oh, uh, that we both have to isolate? Yeah. Yes, yeah, i just... Me? Yeah. I haven't even got my text. Oh, to say that I isolate with you? Yeah. It was a bit late for that, isn't it? When you got, you both got positive the other day, but it's only come through now. Yeah. Where's the curry? What's the curry that I'm getting? I think this is the one you got last time, the panang. Panang? Creamy panang. With green beans and chilies. Nah, that's not food enough. Masan. Masan the curry. Yeah, because she knows coconut milk yeah. and your tea. Yeah, that's me. Torrid pretty shorts with chicken. With chicken. Is that the one you get, that's my curry? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want? Six. Bells in there. Yeah. What rice? Uh, what do I use again? Coconut, I think. Do you remember yeah. last time you got the coconut rice? The coconut rice is really sticky, it's well good. Coconut rice, let's go. I think I might get the massive curry too. Massive curry is nice. Massive. Massive man curry. Massive um, and... <laughs> I'm really tired. I've got COVID. Chicken. Tell people what we're doing. Coconut rice. We're getting delivery because we can't go out. And curry. Oh, you get 20% off, team. And curry is not the only thing we will probably taste right now because our I taste buds are completely taste gone. It. I mean, if you get a spicy curry, we'll be able to taste it, so. Should we get a side of vegetables? I liked them last time. Megan, what are you having? I think I want on the vegan specials that Thai red soy based protein curry with rice. What? Can't wait to not be able to taste any of this. Okay, I think they're real too. How do they? What has yours two got in? Go to smell, I don't mind. I'm going to smell for four. Oh, wait. They also look very veggie. They look like veggie, don't they? That's my smell. That's my smell. 
That's a point with a rodent on it though, wouldn't it? Yeah. I'm going to eat man out of this to see what it's oh, yeah. not. That's gross, spicy. Whoa! Can you taste that? A little bit. Yeah, no. Oh no, what a shame. Oh shit. Oh fuck. I'm just going to eat man in this. Ah, it's village. Where? In the village. Oh. Why'd you all do that? <laughs> Very funny, isn't it? It looks like it wants to come off the other side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, start this. Oh. Spring hole. So we were on day four after the test. Day four. Mm. It's now Monday anyway. We missed the day yesterday just because we took a bit of a chill day. We were knackered. I'm trying to think what I'm saying now. Fucking so hard, your brain's frazzled. I can't fucking think. That's one of the biggest things, like I said the other day, is the cognitive function. Like it just, it's gone. Like my brain's like shit anyway, but it just completely throws you off and makes it really hard. Like I haven't read the last two days because I can't focus. Currently reading Brain Over Binge, which is a really good book. Coming to the end of it now. And I'm not the best reader, so this one has been quite easy to read and get through, so I massively recommend that. Also, just been finishing in, with six, finishing in. See what I mean? Mm. Six minute diaries, more than doing my gratitudes. Um, I was actually planning on having a little train today, so I fell from a bit of bench press and stuff, doing something quite light. It's now been a full week since I first had symptoms, this is like the eighth day. So we're going to try and get out for a session, but we'll see how that goes. I've been double dosing on vitamins, multivitamins. Oh, there goes that. Oh, fuck with it. Um, banging in the vitamin C, banging in the caffeine. Also, I have to keep it down because Meg's asleep. Meg's just had her ex exam results. What are you on about? Yes. She had results back yesterday from a COVID test and she's actually negative even though she's been around us for like four, five, six, seven, eight days, whatever it is. Um, so that was surprising. She's obviously. I think she's had it though, don't we? I think she's had it before, yeah. Last, la literally last February. Yeah. Before they did like testing and stuff. But she's now isolating with us as well because she's got to. What else were you gonna say? <laughs> I've got nothing to fucking say. Don't say. It's fucking boring. Man. It is boring. Don't say it's shit. Man. It's boring. Do you know what? It's Do you know what as well? When it's boring. You get so agitated. Yeah. I'm so agitated. Because the only thing we can use to do is walk the shop, and you can't even do that. The thing that's been difficult is like getting. People to, like if you lived on your own, you had COVID or you found out or you didn't have any family, getting food from the shop is hard. We had to wait two days to get a collection from Tesco and you still miss fucking stuff off, didn't they? What? I'm not listening. This is the norm, by the way. I just talk and then she just doesn't take anything that I'm saying. I'm saying if you live on your own, it's hard to get food, oh, isn't it? You'd have, well, you just do a food shop, wouldn't you, in order? You know what I'm saying is I take two days. It's been quite difficult. Like literally all I ate yesterday was beans. And chocolate. But that's what you can do if you, when you do your COVID test, um, and you get results back. You can say on the NHS website if you need support in terms of shop, in terms of shopping. If you live on your own, we're quite lucky because we know well a lot of people in Manchester who've been dropping off food for us. Yeah. And then also we do massive shops from Tesco to collect. How are you feeling? Tired today. Tired. I cried again today. A little tear on today, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, that's bananas. You might not be able to see that, it's quite dark in here. You had a shave. Oh, smooth as baby's <laughs> bum. Is that one of the things I had to enjoy that made me feel better? Was just grooming a little bit. Yeah. It was actually really awful, and this is so disgusting. But you know, when you lose your sense of smell and taste. You can't tell if you smell. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Bit. Do you know what I mean though? It's actually, you don't know if you smell, so I feel yeah. like I have to shower like every half hour. Why did you feel upset? Even though I don't smell. I'm just so like fed up. Like it's really hard as well, like being on social media, people are like, when are you next going to post a workout? I don't know. What do you think you're going to die? Which, yeah, someone if, if you're one of those people, ask that by the way, like you need to think about if your family member was ill, your mum was ill or whatever, 
would you ask your mum, do you think you're going to die? Legitimately, legitimately, no. Don't ask such a fucking stupid question to someone. Yeah, I had a lot of stupid questions that I didn't actually go over in my YouTube. I think I actually answered the dying question. I was like, why would I sit here and think that I'm going to die? Like, you can't compare your situation to anyone else's. Yep, not far off bedtime. Usually, at the moment, sleeping for like 11 hours per night, which is just mad. But like, we're just absolutely shattered all the time. So, probably going to watch The Crown because we've been watching that at the moment. And then hit the sack. Breath-wise, I'm trying to get it back. Hard than usual, recovery time's a bit slower. I'm not tired, cold, I'm still burned. 160 calories, I'm just doing four sets, which is quite a lot for me. I'm following the program at the moment, but I'm just pretty much halving everything. I halving the RP, not going to absolute failure. Probably trying to work at like six or seven. Probably push a little bit past it on that set. Halving all my sets. Just gonna try and take an hour workout, work my way through it. Now I've done my compound movement, just gonna do some isolation. Yeah, we'll get through it. I actually feel surprisingly quite good. It's now the... I haven't trained for nine days, but it's eight. Tomorrow's last day of isolation, so tomorrow's day 10. Today, I actually feel a hell of a lot better. Feels good to be able to train. It just feels really awkward training at home and doing shit like this, but we crack on. I ended up training for a total time of 65 minutes, including warm and stuff as well. Session was kind of having a play around, did some compound movements outside, came inside, as you've probably seen, did some isometric holds, some lateral raises. I will pop the workout in the description, whether you want to try it or not. Don't feel too taxed from it, I actually feel really good after doing it. I feel like I've got a good sweat on, endorphins are released, smashed some shit up, got a bit angry, released some tension, released some stress. It's all the good stuff. Total calories burned was 550. Quite a lot for an upper body session, especially because it was cold outside. But I think I'm going to continue training now. I might just see how I feel tomorrow today is a fine oh, is it no it's not tomorrow's the final day of isolation so i'll probably just train again then from there the final day i'll see how i feel but now fucking sting Yeah, the extend up. What do you reckon these? I know they're 
Yeah. 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 Ye
female in question is Lucy's sister. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Like, I don't know how honestly people thought it was, it was like strange. Do you know what it is though? And I, again, you realise from situations like this, at a time where you think that everyone would come together to pull together to support each other, you notice all those a small number of people who are just out to have a dig at people who've got the sticks out, want to have a poke, want to throw criticism, want to just cause some kind of controversy, 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 controversy. and have a pop at people. And when you're in a position where you're unwell, you're stressed, you're anxious, you don't know what's going on, you feel like shit, you run down, there's just the last thing you need is just people just throwing unnecessary fuel onto the fire. And it gets to the point where you're going to fucking burn out because it's annoying. And that's why I addressed it a couple of times on the story and I addressed it in an email this morning. Again, if if you know someone's got COVID or you don't really understand what is going on in other people's lives, don't leave questions or don't, sorry, not questions, don't throw your opinion onto other people because it's very unwarranted. Now, I do understand that everyone has the right to an opinion, but I also have the right to completely fucking ignore it because it's completely unwarranted and unneeded at, at the time, especially when that person's struggling to get over something that is pretty scary already. Throwing questions at people like, do you think you are going to die? Or you, I, I haven't had, I haven't had um, taste back or haven't had a fitness bath for six months. Like, think about your mum or your family member or your dad or your sister if they had it. Would you ask those stupid, idiotic questions to them when they're already probably feel, feeling quite down? The answer I would suggest would be no. So don't do it to other people. Yeah, that the question that was asked to me was, do you think you're going to die? And I just cried because I was like, no, I've not thought about that, but now I'm thinking about yeah. it. And you, like Ben said, you wouldn't Thank ask God. your mum that. You wouldn't ask your, your close friends and sisters. So don't say to a stranger online, it's, had a little breakdown. Can I have a water? I've got a bit of a water bit of water to go for it. Thank you. Okay, this question is fantastic. Did you struggle with your breathing or breathlessness, even though you're super fit and healthy? I definitely think I struggled a bit more than you. Yeah, do you know what I was so surprised about, like how much that did actually hit us? And I feel for those people who have underlying health conditions, mm. such as, I don't know, like my dad's got underlying health conditions, people who fall into the obese or severely obese category would have really struggled. Anyone who maybe had a general poor health and fitness levels would have massively struggled. So me, it really hit home for me of how much me and you struggled with it, of how much it probably hit other people as well. But I think that's why people were so shocked that it's not, and this is what <laughs> we kept explaining to people, you could be the fittest person in the world and still contract it, it's a virus, you don't get immune just because you're fit and healthy, but I truly believe you recover better. Me and Ben are pretty feeling fantastic, not fantastic, we're feeling alright, we're feeling good, and I do think that's because we are fit and healthy people, however... On days three, four, and five for me, I, I in my head I was like, I'm never gonna get well. I was like, I'm never gonna breathe breath again. <laughs> it's, it's the end. I'm, like, really saying that. I really was panicking because my chest was so freaking tight. It reminded me of my swimming days, but we think mine was worse. We think my lungs were worse because when I did swim, I had really bad lungs. I had two small lung operations. I had vocal cord dysfunction. I had inhalers. So we think that was probably why I was more breathless than Ben. And like, it's so legit going up the stairs, you get to the top and it's like, oh God, you had to sit down for 10 minutes, didn't you? But whereas now, I've been running up and down my God, stairs. I was sweating all the time. <laughs> you, oh yeah. my God. Oh, ben, ben at night. <laughs> I got out the shower and I go into the bathroom. I'm like, I need to get in the shower again. If I would wake up in the morning and I was like, I'm just going to change the sheets. Yeah, do you remember when you had to put a towel down that, sec that second night? No joke, I was lying in a oh my piss God. pool of sweat. Well, I didn't get that at all. It's, again, just different symptoms well, for different people, yeah, isn't it? Well, personal dependent. So, the questions around <clears throat> training, which we are going to answer, the guilt over resting, how to reconcile with lost progress, and how much is actually lost. Can I just dive into this one? You go for it. I've spoken about this a few times when it comes to muscle tissue loss. Now, it will take three to four weeks for you to start really noticing the effects of reversibility, i.e. the loss of muscle tissue, and that's different from doing completely not, nothing at all. So, I mean, even if you take a good two, three weeks off, you're still going to be fine if you get back to training then. 
Um, and even if you only do 90% of the volume that you'd usually do, you will maintain the amount of tissue that you've got pretty well. So I wouldn't worry too much even if you've got to take three weeks off or slightly over three weeks. You're not going to get any diminishing returns from doing that as long as you're getting a protein intake in. I would massively recommend if you are someone who's in a calorie deficit and you contract COVID to bump up your calories because your body's going to need it to recover. And also there's no point in trying to cut whilst you've got COVID. You want to try and maintain the amount of muscle tissue you've got. And the best way to do that is by hitting a good protein, in target, protein target and getting your food in. Yeah, no, 100%. And all the questions around training, a lot of them were kind of saying, how do you refrain yourself from working out if you're such an active person? I guarantee you will not feel like yeah. it. You, you you just won't. And it was kind of a... It was, it was a weird one for me and Ben because I think I needed to take some time off anyway. So this kind of forced me to take time off. But seriously, it is the last thing you think of... When you get a virus, when you're poorly, it doesn't have to be COVID, I'm talking about anything, you could have food poisoning, you could have a sickness bug. The last thing you'll think about doing is picking up a weight or doing a hit session or, or going for a run. You just won't feel like it. So it wasn't hard to refrain from doing anything because you're ill. And when it comes down to it, your actual health is more important in terms of getting your lungs to feel better, like being able to breathe having a better appetite not feeling fatigued and feeling like you need a nap every half hour you won't think about the training you, yeah. you just you just won't like i've not trained yet i'm probably going to give it a go tomorrow but i'm only going to film yeah i trained a bit of chest and shoulders yesterday and jesus christ <laughs> i'm sore today Dom's all real okay so oh wow there's a lot of a lot of training questions but this one's actually about mental health how is it affecting you mentally, more anxious, stressed, sad, happy? Do you know what, for me, I felt like I, what's the word I'm looking for? I was like almost on a knife edge. It probably put me on edge a lot of the time. And do you like when small things in life usually wouldn't piss you off? But like... Agitated. Yeah, like mm. if you'd made my cup of tea too warm in the morning, that would have probably pissed me off. Not like that was an example, no, but, no, like, but, but do you know what I mean? Like the small things in life massively get to you. It was made just proper frustrated all the time, um, bad tempered, and, and that was something that I just noticed more so is that I, my patience was very far and few. Yeah, whereas I, I had like I had no feeling in my. I kept saying she was like, I can't feel a thing in my body. Like I have no emotions, and I just kept crying. Actually, I cry, I cry a lot. No, you don't I mean, cry much. I cried a little bit. You cried quite a bit when you had COVID. But... I cried quite a lot when I had COVID because I was I was really really well, have, stressed. How hard? Yeah, I have had. I was really really stressed. Like I felt so overwhelmed with work and social media and the questions that I was getting. Honestly, hundreds of DMs a day. How 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 was the COVID? How did you get COVID? Where did you catch it? Oh, Where so that was your one. Can we what move on to that one? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that one in a sec just constant and it's like no nobody was like meaning any anything by it they yeah. were just genuinely curious and i completely understand that which is why i'm doing a podcast on it and me and ben have both done youtube videos but i was mentally absolutely fucked like that is the best way i can describe it and that was the hardest that's a big hardest descriptive word from lucy davis who does not really yeah, i don't swear like but that swearing. is really really how i felt yeah so the most common question how or where do you think you caught it? Do you know how yeah. you caught it? This is, I addressed this a couple of times in the story. Um, and I don't know where we caught it. Like we've said a couple of times, it could potentially have been the supermarket. Now, I was looking at some of the percentages on where people were catching it from and where the highest rates of transmission were. And I think it was in November, um, just before Christmas, that the supermarkets were the highest. Um, or recently after Christmas at like 18% and schools are just under or secondary schools are just under anyway and then primary schools so I would imagine we maybe picked it up from there because when we contracted it most things were already shut into quarantine and that was the other thing is that people were asking do you think you will change your ethos or your thinking moving forward in regards to gyms being open and I, I won't change the work my stance on it because I don't believe that I picked it up in the gym I don't believe that they're any more dangerous like they've always been like 1.1% of the transmission rates for for COVID, so <coughs> the stance on it hasn't changed. Do I believe they should be open now? 
probably not now. Like with everything that's going on, the amount that it's, it's it's kind of being transmitted and how quick it's being transmitted, I don't think anywhere should really be open at the moment, apart from obviously supermarkets where if they're not, then pretty much screwed. So I don't believe they should be open, but I think there's they are one of the first things that need to be be reopened for people's mental health and for obviously taking some of the pressure off the NHS as it's one of those um, communities, it's one of those parts of the set that massively benefits us both physically and mentally. Yeah, and we did a whole podcast talking about the relationship between obesity and COVID and the stats are absolutely astronomical. So we are still 100% wanting gyms to be open, not, not just for us, but for everyone's sake. But yeah, they can't be open in a national lockdown. Nothing is open in a national lockdown. Yeah, so I think we will we will speak about that more on podcasts to come. I know we did a podcast on home training, but I think just as our insight's grown, I think if we view this now moving forward that we're going to be training at home for a long time, there's a lot more stuff that we can do in engineer to make training more enjoyable, but also more progressive so that we're not just seeing it as a stock gap. Yeah, definitely. This question is kind of linked to what you were saying before, but will you take different, stronger precautions now? I, I well, no, we weren't. Do we weren't not taking precautions. Yeah. We were wearing masks. I'm very anal about keeping my distance in the supermarket anyway, and that's the only thing that's open. And we go for a walk outside, just the two of us. I don't think we caught it from being any less cautious. I just think because this new strain of the virus is a lot more infectious and transmits a lot quicker mm -hmm. that was one of the reasons why i picked it up like if we look at the rates for the uk now i think it was at one in 50 and then it's maybe it's even like gone up like one in 40 what, people yeah so just obviously a lot of people catching it, it's something that we've got to be careful that was one of the questions i had in the story where did you catch it from so i can avoid going i was like mate like the only one place that is open. <laughs> you don't live anywhere near me and two i'm pretty sure the spot that i picked it up from i didn't leave it there i <laughs> left so you're not going to fucking stumble on it mate Literally. Calm down we we have had some mad questions. Yeah. Um, is it what you expected? No. I died. Well, no. I thought. I, I thought I wouldn't have felt it. Well, some people have said that, that they? because as well. some people had that thing where they've already had it but didn't even know they had it. Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic, yeah. yeah. And again, you, you can't know for sure, but I didn't think it'd knock me this much. No, I, we, we, had, we, we had said it a few times in the year because we met when my sister definitely had it we were like oh we must just be asymptomatic like we must have just had it so it's definitely not what i expected i didn't think i'd get breathless going up and down the stairs when people were saying that to me i was like no yeah. i was like i've got i'm well fit and healthy that will happen to me but genuinely that was so naive of, for us to say that just because we're fit and healthy yes we've recovered better however the symptoms were still completely there um, so, no, it's, it's not what I expected. No, 100%. Is it scary? Mm, I wouldn't say it was scary because, do you know, if, for example... Freezing. That's actually so hard. It makes you feel a little bit ill mm -hmm. as So, that was the first shot done. It's the first time we've ventured outside the house. Managed <laughs> to complete. Wow, look at that. Do you know what it is? 1,800 steps, get that. It's currently minus one, so it's feckin' freezing. First time I've been in a while, prawn butties. They're back within the staple of the diet. That's a great time. But actually feeling a hell of a lot better today. Feeling good, feeling cold. But it's nice to have some liberty and freedom back. Yeah. We're gonna go through the food shop because it's pretty fucking boring. Did you wake up and feel like genuinely better though? Just asleep at the moment, like I'm still sleeping for like 11 hours. Not 11 hours, oh not. Are you joking? Have you just said that? I did just panic where the camera she was. She just said, where is the camera? You guys are currently on it, so. Also, big day today. I'm going to do my first session in Mazzy HQ. However, it's only going to be a banded session. But I'm actually really excited. Sorry. You need to go through this bridge. So I appreciate this has been a lot. Sorry. Sorry everybody. I appreciate this has been a long video. Um, obviously it is a week worth of COVID or and like all experience of it. I know through the podcast in there at you guys as well, just thought I was the easiest way to answer some of the questions that I've come across. Apart from that, feeling a hell of a lot better. Obviously we give some more recommendations yesterday. I would just chill, like literally do nothing. I said that on one of the other podcasts, sometimes 
the best way to fix things is just to unplug them and the same goes for us as well. Do nothing, those up on some of your multivitamins, Vit D, Vit C, uh, we take some fish oils and a couple of bits. Nothing crazy, obviously this is just our experience, we're not pharmacologists, doctors, like I was saying before, two people who have had COVID. Hope you enjoyed it, in the next video I'm going to be taking you through Mazzy HQ, hopefully the whole rig will be sorted. As always, if you've managed to enjoy this full video, got to the end of it, please give it a massive like and a thumbs up because it does actually help me quite a lot. If you're new to the channel then make sure you hit that subscribe button, even contemplate hitting the notify me. Is it the bell button? I think it's, it's a bell, yeah. Hit a little bell somewhere, and yeah, catch you in the next one. Gonna jump for this